His hands were empty when he was shot in the chest at the hands of the officer. We failed Adam, and we cannot afford to fail one more young person in our city. A family in mourning, a city in shock, and a police force facing new criticism after the shooting of 13-year-old Adam Toledo. Welcome to WGN-TV Political Report, everybody. I'm Paul Lisnick. Let's get right to our top story. On Thursday, the city releasing a dozen videos and audio clips, body cam footage, security film, and more, showing the final moments of Adam Toledo's life. Now, what you see is the split-second confrontation between the 13-year-old and a Chicago police officer in the Little Village neighborhood in the early morning hours on March 29th. Police say Toledo was armed with a gun, threw it behind a fence before he was shot. Lawyers for the Toledo family insists his hands were empty when the single fatal shot was fired. Joining me to talk about all of this and more is 22nd Ward Alderman Michael Rodriguez, 2nd Ward Alderman Brian Hopkins, uh, 15th Ward Alderman Raymond Lopez, and 5th Ward Alderwoman Leslie Hairston. Welcome to all of you. I should note uh, we air on Sunday morning. We almost always do this uh, on Sunday morning. Of course, we're taping this uh, on Friday, and so I have to say that because who knows what the weekend holds. Uh, and so I think it's only fair that we make that point. Um, Alderman, uh, uh, Rodriguez, let me start with you because this happened in your ward. The video now viewed by the public, viewed by the world, actually. And it, it does appear in the video that it looks like Adam pr probably had a gun in his hand, but not at the time that he was shot. What is the pulse of the ward of Little Village area of your community right now? What was your sense of this tape? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. And the shooting occurred one block outside of my ward. However, the Toledo family lives three blocks from my home in my ward. You know, the fact of the matter is the young man had his hands up and there was no gun in his hand. Um, that violence, that tragedy that we experienced several weeks ago and we experienced yesterday in viewing the video is um, absolutely put our community uh, in a very difficult situation. People are hurting. People are very upset um, on a lot and a lot of different reasons. And most notably, I think people are, are, are justifiably upset about the fact that we have another uh, black or brown young person who's uh, been killed by the police. Uh, let me do a round robin. I think you all should need to chime in on this. Let me go to Alderman Hopkins. I mean, obviously, Alderman, this is going on at the same time we're dealing with uh, the, the couple of cases in, in Minneapolis and, or, the, or Minnesota, I should say. Um, what is happening in your ward? What reaction are you seeing thus far? You know, the preparation that's underway right now uh, is really unprecedented. And I will say that preparation doesn't necessarily mean boarding up windows and having police officers stand by for potential civil unrest that we've seen in Minneapolis and other cities. So far, every credible voice in the city of Chicago, the faith leaders, the politicians, the leaders of social justice organizations, everyone has appealed for peace. Everyone has said, let's have our demonstrations. Let's express our grief, even our outrage about what happened. Let's do it without arson. Let's do it without looting. Let's do it without violence. Let's not be smirched the memory of this young man by having an outcry that leads into violence like we've seen in other cities. I know we're taping this on Friday and it's going to air on Sunday. Uh, I hope on Sunday morning we wake up to a peaceful city uh, that is still in mourning and still in grief. Um, but is not in flames. Alderman Harrison, your sense of this, and one of the difficult parts, of course, is that this does involve a 13-year-old boy. Uh, and I, I've heard some of the folks here, well, he's a man. He's a 13-year-old. You're 13 years old. You are a boy. Uh, how are you impacted on this? You know, too many of our young people are in desperate need of resources and support. And we as a city have not been supporting them. While many of us have called for funding and for support, we have not received it. So, you know, everything that everybody's talking about, um, about police reform, it is time to stop the talk and it's time to put up. We have a civilian unity oversight uh, ordinance that has not seen the light of day. If we are serious, we are the ones that have the power to make this happen and to make this now. And that's what needs to happen. Alderman Lopez, I've seen some of your tweets. I know you were on Hannity uh, the other night with uh, Gary McCarthy. And your take on this seems to be we need to blame the gangs. To my knowledge, there's no evidence that Adam Toledo was part of a gang, whatever. Are you making some assumptions that we don't know right now? Well, I don't think 
Paul, that I'm making any assumptions. I think what we know is that, yes, what we saw unfold first and foremost was tragic. It's unfortunate. But all of what transpired was because a 21-year-old man with six arrests and a known gang member was trying to recruit that young boy into the gang. He brought him down out into the morning hours to shoot at cars on the street, which ultimately led to the chase, to the officer seeing a weapon and discharging. That is not something that's in dispute. It's not even something that's in question. And this is something that we see repeated time and again in our communities. And yes, we do need civilian oversight. I agree with my colleagues. I think we need to restore the legitimacy of law enforcement, absolutely. But we also have to stop dancing around the issue that gangs are a problem and an identifiable threat in our communities, actively recruiting our children to be the next generation of gang members in the city of Chicago. Alderman Rodriguez, there, there were some calls by some, the mayor should step down and the superintendent should step down. A mayor looked pretty emotional and pretty wrapped up in this. What is your take about responsibility? Well, first of all, I want to agree with uh, my colleague, Alderman Hopkins. You know, uh, the mother of Adam Toledo, Elizabeth Toledo, said that to honor um, Adam's memory, um, we should call for justice. We should be vocal for the cause of justice, but those calls should be peaceful. So I also wanted to uh, echo that sentiment. It's a time for leadership, and we all need to lead. I'm, I'm very hurt. My community's very hurt, but we don't need to cause more pain. And I think um, his mother said that he was a sweet boy. Uh, he had his whole life ahead of him, but he didn't, she didn't want anyone to die in his name or to commit violence in his name. As far as responsibility is concerned, um, I think Alderwoman Harrison is exactly right. We need police accountability, and we need it now. We have a monumental ordinance that's been drafted between two grassroots community organizations uh, that have come together to, to, to have a unity ordinance on civilian oversight of the police. Um, I believe that that will make safer communities uh, by having um, our residents have a direct line as far as accountability is concerned with the police. But let me also say the following. We should not be victim shaming here. We need to make sure that we wrap around our arms around the Toledo family and uh, Mrs. Toledo. And any sentiment to the contrary is at the very least uh, mal put and at very most extremely ignorant to, the, to what the actual issue here is. A 13 year old boy had his hands up and he was shot. I know you all want to respond. I know you all want to respond to that. I'm going to let you do that, but first we have to take a break. So please don't go with us. Our first break is coming, but they're staying around. We'll be right back.